Gold, starring Matthew McConaughey and Edgar Ramirez, is a movie inspired by true events and teaches us about value. And what I mean by that is that it makes us think, what is the value in things like an idea? Like the idea that a certain area of the world may or may not contain a precious metal, and how much value is that certain precious metal worth to you and those around you? And for those around you who you may or may not consider your friends, what is their value to you? Now before I go any further, if you haven't seen the movie Gold, the rest of this video does contain spoilers, so you've been warned. So the ending leaves several questions unanswered. Since the explanation went by so fast, how exactly did Michael fool everybody out of six billion dollars? Is Michael truly dead or does Kenny receiving the check for half of Michael Acosta's dumped stock money of 164 million dollars signal that he's in fact alive? And since the movie is inspired and not based on true events, what's the real story of Kenny Wells and Michael Acosta? So let's start from the beginning. Michael Acosta rose to mining fame due to his major copper find from what he called the Ring of Fire theory, believing that he knew where exactly continental plates collided years ago creating intense heat and pressure to create copper. This is why Kenny brings him on as a 50-50 business partner with his super unofficial napkin contract that states whatever it takes. We later find out that Michael's biggest claim to fame was nothing more than pure dumb luck as he was actually searching for a far less valuable metal while scouting in his truck, and his truck just simply got stuck in the mud, and he basically said, fuck it, we'll dig here, and somehow found copper. Which should have been the first clue to Kenny that this man is not all that he's cracked up to be. Anyway, fast forward to Michael and Kenny's operation, after weeks of no gold finding and all the workers having left, in an attempt to get the workers back, Michael offers help in any way they need if they'll come back to work. Realizing a child is sick, he offers clean drinking water to he and the family. I mean, I'm sure medicine would have been better, but, you know, baby steps. Michael uses this trading knowledge with the other villagers by trading them as blue bag water filtration devices in exchange for any river gold that they pull out of the water. And not wanting he and Kenny's dig site to be a total failure, since it seems like the two have become really close friends at this point, he begins using a cheating method known as salting by adding river gold into the core samples. That way, when they go into the lab for analysis, it seems as though they are consistently pulling gold. And since only Michael had the key to the locked areas where the stored samples had been, nobody suspected a thing. So with this fraudulent information, Michael and Kenny hit the town to get Kenny's father's company on the New York Stock Exchange, where they can have unknowing buyers believe they'll get an instant return on their fake gold mine. Until an independent lab did a bit of their own digging and got nothing, and re-examined the initial gold finding results, and realized that the gold in their first samples had round edges instead of sharp ones, something that can only be created by several years of river water running over the gold, not from being pulled from the earth. At this point, everything for our characters unravels. Michael Acosta has vanished and is assumed to be dead to everybody except Kenny Wells. All we know before his seemingly apparent death is that he was captured by the Indonesian government, he jumped out of a helicopter, and his body was found in the forest days later. Albeit without his head and hands, the two most important body parts you need to properly ID somebody. But did he really mail a check for $82 million before he killed himself? I mean, it would be the very first unselfish act he did after ripping off hundreds of thousands of people with his dishonest claims of gold. Well, it's at this point that you should know that this movie, inspired by true events, is mostly fake. Sort of. So here's the real quick sad story behind gold. I'll also leave a link below if you want to read the whole story. So Kenny Wells and Michael Acosta are fictional names. But Wells is based on a real person, David Walsh. And instead of Washoe Mining Company, he owned Briex Minerals, a Canadian company. Walsh and Michael de Guzman, not Acosta, both purchased land in Indonesia in 1993 hoping to find gold. And then like in the movie, they found a little gold, lied about their findings, and made billions. But an independent third party started their own investigation and found nothing. Very soon afterwards, de Guzman killed himself, allegedly, by jumping out of a helicopter having some believe that to this day, he is secretly living it up in luxury off anybody's radar. Brie X stock tanked in 1997, and sadly, even if David Walsh did receive half of the money that de Guzman made, Walsh didn't live long enough afterwards, as he died of a brain aneurysm in 1998. So yes, oh my god, they killed Kenny. And by they, I mean an artery that supplies blood to the brain. This story is a well-known Canadian scandal, with the companies, events, and characters' names changed for American audiences. And that's everything I have for the Any Explained and Real Sad Story of Gold. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe below, and tell me your thoughts on the film. Do you believe Michael Acosta or real name Michael de Guzman is still alive to this day and faked his death? And what would you do if putting Kenny in Michael's place? I'll tell you what I would do, I'd take the money and you would never see me again. Anyway, as always, remember this is 5 Things That Explains Everything with The Fingerbang Show. I'm out.